And then it came to preserve Nesab, which is lineage. People, it is a right of a human being to know who their people are. You should know who you're from. Like what happened in this country with the uh, African black people in this country in the, in the 1950s. Really, it goes back to earlier than that. But the idea of attaching an X to the name. That was a statement. You know, this is what the, the nationalist movement was making. What they were saying is X is the mathematical symbol for the unknown. And what we're doing is rejecting our slave name, like Washington. See, a black man whose name is Washington, he didn't come over on the Mayflower, right? He didn't come over on the Mayflower. He, he, why does he have a nice Anglo-Saxon name? Because that was a name that was just given to him, Right? Some of these, the blacks, when they were freed, they literally just gave them the names. Washington, Jefferson, Carver, Smith, like that, just names. And some of them took the names of their uh, masters, like that. So what they were doing is they were saying, no, we don't accept that anymore. We don't know who we are, but we know we're not Washington. <laughs> right? That's, at least we know that now. They didn't know that for a long time, so that's a type of consciousness. But... What they were saying is, we don't know, and this is a, a right that was taken away from us. That was taken away from us. They were literally stripped from their families. And that was erased from their consciousness. Because children were taken from their parents and sold into slavery. And this is what happened. This, is, this happened in this country. So a human being has the right to know his lineage, who he is, who, the, who, who, who your father is. And this is why in fornication the rules are so strong, because with fornication that breaks down. And this is why a woman who bears a child out of childbirth, even if the father is quote-unquote known, that child does not out of wedlock. <laughs> even if the child is born out of wedlock and knows the father, right? and knows the father, the child does not take that father's name. Doesn't take the name. A, a bastard cannot say, that's my father. By Sharia. Cannot say that. Even if you did a genetic test, anything. No. A, a Ibn Zina has no lineage. By Sharia. None. Why? Because every religion, every deen has recognized marriage. Every deen. Marriage is the way lineage is preserved. The Muslims are polygynous and not uh, they are not polyandrous. Because a woman will not know if she takes more than one husband, who is the father of the child. And you can't say, oh well we could do a DNA test. 80% of the world doesn't have telephones. You know, DNA tests aren't cheap. They cost a lot of money, right? 80% of the world doesn't have telephones. So don't, you know, don't use this, you know, the, the people of Bayan, they say, The anomaly is something you keep in mind, but you don't use it as a standard to measure things. So, and Islam permits polygyny because the lineage can be preserved. If there's one progenitor, a woman will know if she guards her uh, private parts, she will know who is the father of her husband, uh, who is the father of her child. And the child has a right. Now, if a man has <coughs> an Emma, which is a bondswoman, and the bondswoman uh, only becomes impregnated, she becomes umwalad. Just by becoming impregnated, by missing a period, she's umwalad. If the child is born, the child is the legal son or the legal daughter of that man by sharia. There are no bastard children in Islam. Islam came to eliminate that. You see? And, and one of the things the Prophet ﷺ said, if a culture, if, if fornication becomes prevalent in a culture, then prepare yourselves for the wrath of Allah. You see? And the wrath is in those children. Because they're filled with rage. And look at what we've now reaching 50% in this country. Children... Born out of wedlock, we're reaching 50% or past. And look at all the crimes. 
Look at all the violence. There's rage. If you go into the prisons in this country and ask these men, they don't have fathers. They didn't have fathers. They don't even know who their fathers were. That's, that, is, that, is a, that is oppression. That's unjust. You can't do that to a human being. They have the right to know who their father is. And so Islam came to preserve that right through the prohibition of fornication and through the guidelines of sharia in proper marriage. And this is why Islam recognized any marriage outside of Islam. If two people become Muslim, they do not have to renew a marital contract. Islam recognizes marriages of other deens. You see, it doesn't, it's as long as it is a marriage that is recognized by the custom of a people. But two people living together with no responsibilities, Islam rejects that completely. And people forget that in 1968, it was major news in this country that a woman in, on the East Coast was kicked out of her university because she was living in sin. 1968, kicked out of a university because she was living in sin. People forget how quickly morals have changed in this culture. There was an article in News and World Report about uh, fornication, uh, uh, premarital sex. And what they were saying was even conservatives won't condemn adult consensual premarital sex. They'll condemn teenage sex, but they will not condemn uh, adult, consenting adults, because everybody's doing it, the article said. Well, why should the children, why should the teenagers not do it? If that's their example. You see? Why? And everything in this culture is saying have fun, enjoy yourself. The media is showing it, promoting fornication. Most of the uh, television sitcoms and the films, they don't have relationships. Marriages are usually dull and boring on television. Uninteresting. It's, it's soap operas. What's exciting is illicit relations. Really? This is what they're seeing and this is what they're being conditioned to believe. Who be the proper name of the child's father's stepfather? They keep their father's name. They, ca they can call uh, the stepfather, um, you know, what they want, nickname or whatever. But they, they have to understand that the stepfather is the stepfather. He's not a legal father. He's actually only a guardian. He's not a stepfather. We don't even have that term. We, and we do not have adoption. And the reason for adoption is see what happens. If, if I adopt a child and, and my last name is Hanson and that child takes my last name three, four generations down the road, they forget that there was an adoption. And suddenly they, that, they think that's their lineage. So lineage is maintained in Islam. Islam abrogated adoption, did not allow for adoption. The Prophet ﷺ adopted Zayd, called him Zayd ibn Muhammad. It's okay to foster for fostering is the Prophet said, I and the one who takes care of a, a, an orphan are like this in Jannah. He put these two fingers together. It's one of the highest things you can do. Right? Kafiru yatim. is one of the highest things you can do to take care of people that don't have parental care. One of the highest things in Islam you can do. But you cannot say, this is my son. This is my daughter. You that the That's a lie. That's a lie. They are not your son and daughter. And they're not your stepson, not your stepdaughter. You say, These are, this is my guard, this is my, uh, you know, ward. Right, exactly. It's my you ward. said that the prophet did... Uh, he adopted Zayd, absolutely. And he announced it at the Kaaba. So he did it. It's, no, that was abrogated. The Prophet ﷺ was prohibited to do that after. Oh, yes, he did that b uh, before, the before. Prophet. yes, absolutely. So what do you do that? He did that before Islam. Are there any guidelines for adopting orphans? Uh, I mean, are there any books or things that we can refer to, especially for this culture? Well, kafala is a, it's a, in fiqh, kafala is a, what's called kafala, which is taking care. It's taking care of the needs of, of children that don't have those to take care of them. Highly encouraged. Do they, do they explain like how to deal with a child when they're an uh, infant? Like what if we adopt the child as an infant? Uh, the child needs to know that the parents are not the original parents. Right, they need to be told that. And this is, you know, this is a big trauma in this country for many people who find out that they've been adopted. Big trauma. Is it true that you cannot give the child your last name? Only if it's your legal child. 
like adopted, yeah, you cannot give it your last name. It has its last name. Even the woman can't take, is not supposed to take your name. She's not uh, Mrs. So-and-so. She has her own lineage, and that should be preserved. She's not, uh, she hasn't become you, right? That's a co-option. It's not part of the Muslim tradition. This is a modern, this is a bid'ah. You know, it's a modern, and it's bid'ah muharrama to do that, to, to give a woman a name that's not her lineage. No, she has her own. She's the so-and-so, the daughter of so-and-so. And we're pat patrilineal. The lineage goes through the father. Sometimes, rarely, men uh, were attributed to a woman because of her righteousness. I mean, that does happen. Like Ibn Taymiyyah. Taymiyyah is from his grandmother. Right? Taymiyyah was a woman. So that does happen, you know, sometimes. But we are not, patri we are not matrilineal. We're a patrilineal uh, dean. The dean is patrilineal. I'm wondering what you're saying. At first, it sounds like a couple of their baron could um, go through an adoption agency and raise a child as long as they get their care of the child. Absolutely. No, they can do what this culture calls adoption. You could do that legally, but you cannot say, This is my child. And if the child is older and a non Muslim, at that time, can you, can you, you know, foster a non Muslim child, or would you have to teach the child? I mean, obviously, you want to teach the child Islam, but. Um, like an adult, you mean to take? Yeah. See, in Sharia, if they're if they've reached puberty, they're not children anymore. Well, I guess what I'm thinking about is, um, well, you know, in the states, you call it foster parent situation. Like if you have a troubled youth, right. younger than puberty, but not infant. You know, like no, you. I, there's nothing that says you can't help them if you want to. You can do that. Nothing in Sharia says you can't help them. I know a sister who has adopted Muslim children and, um, and the community knows that they are adopted and they're small and at one point uh, as children play, the other children teach them to tell them that they didn't, that that's not your mother and she adopted them at a very early age and the only mother that they know. They tease them? Yeah, other. Well, that's, you know, Lord of the Flies syndrome. <laughs> right? And, I mean, well, the I mean, children can be very cruel to other children. That's why you want to have your children around children that are well raised and learn not to do things like that. You know, not all children tease. You know, really. I mean, children should be socialized into uh, respect and should learn that they shouldn't do, and they can. Not something they can't do, you know. And they will fall into things like that, but they should learn to, to respect, uh, you know, the feelings of others even at an early age. And that can be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have two questions. The first one was with the bonds woman. Right. She has, uh, she has a child by the man. Then she goes, she's no longer a bonds woman. She becomes, she, she becomes what's called um walad. Right. She's no, she, cannot be, she cannot be sold. But the child is and the child is a legal child of that man and is in, inherits and everything. It's, a, it's the son of that man and takes the man's name. Okay, the second question is, um, if a woman wanted to take the husband's last name, would that be permissible? If she wanted to take her husband's last name? Okay. You know, I don't know. I, I, let me check on that. All right. I'd I'd prefer to because I, I don't I don't want to do I mean I have an idea and I don't want to give a definitive because I'm not sure. So let let me ask uh, Sheikh Abdullah what he says or tomorrow Sheikh Abdullah who's a mufti the man coming tomorrow is a mufti. What if, what if her last name is not a Muslim last name and then she marries a Muslim? Like no, it doesn't have to be uh, the you know the Sahaba had last names they weren't Muslim. They I mean they're. Fathers were mushrikeen, pagans. You know, Umar ibn al-Khattab, al-Khattab was not a Muslim. I mean, it doesn't, name is a name. The name of your father is your father. Whether he's Muslim or not is, doesn't matter. That's your name. You know, like my name, my father's name was Hanson. That was his uh, father's name and his father's name and his father's name. Goes back to whoever the first Hans, you know, it means John. Right? Son of John, Ibn Yahya. That's what it means. 
you know, it's, it's just, uh, that's the way the Europeans said, Ibn Yahya, Han's son, son of Hans. Hans is Yohanna. And from lineages, it is important in that way, then why when we convert to each, do we take the name? Oh, that's a first name, which is a choice. You don't have to take a Muslim name. If you become Muslim, you don't have to take, I shouldn't say a Muslim name, I would just say you don't have to take an Arabic name. Right? I mean, there were uh, many cultures where they didn't, uh, all adopt Muslim names. You still go to Shiraz. We have a Shiraz here. We have a Shir. Shir is a Persian name. You know, we have uh, Mehnaz. Many names in, uh, right? There are many, many names. Persian names are very common. Even some Arabs name their, their uh, women Persian names. You'll find Persian names in the Arab communities, right? You'll find Turkish names in, in, the, in the Arab world. That's just something, you know, in many cultures when you convert, even, even within the Christian tradition, uh, you, you often took a name. Like even within the Catholic tradition, uh, when you go into an order that, and you, 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 you read your vows, they often took a name of one of the righteous, the pious ancestors, so that they would become, their, their name might have been uh, Christopher or whatever, and then, and then they take their vow, they become Paul or they become Peter, or they become... I mean, even Paul's name was Saul. When he converted, he became Paul. So it, this is just a tradition within many cultures. The Prophet did not change people's names unless they were bad names, because one of the rights of a child is to be given a good name by the father. So if he found somebody's name was inappropriate, he would change it. Like Shaqi means wretched. He t said, no, your name's Saeed, which means happy, felicitous. That's all. So if you want to take a name, you can take a name. If you don't want to, you don't have to. And there's an interesting book called Dawah in America, written by a Christian missionologist, which is people who study conversion. And he's actually not a Christian, he's a researcher. And he was doing this as an academic exercise. And one of the things he said in there is that he, that he studied the, the, the reasons people convert, and I think he identified about 10 dominant reasons, and he said that Islam was uniquely the only religion amongst the religions that Americans convert to that had all 10 of the reasons. And he said, so he had to deduce from that that the Muslims were just doing a really bad job at presenting their religion because they had so few conversions. But one of the things he said is he, he felt that, that Americans would not convert if, if they felt that they had to take uh, Arabic names, right? And he, he actually felt that, that, uh, that Muslims should, if an American does become a Muslim, they should just keep their American name. That was his idea, anyway. I mean, he's not a Muslim, but it's an interesting concept, you know. So. so then, um, is it preferred but not required for Muslims to name their children? You don't have to name your child uh, an Arabic name. Nothing in Sharia says that you have to name your child. Uh, an Arab. There are good names to name because of who the people were. And the Prophet definitely said, Khairul Asma ma'ubida wa humida. The best names are those that have abd in them or have praise, like Mahmud, Hamid, Ahmed, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those type names. Hamid, right? Those are the best names. And Abdul Rahman. There's another riwayah that's Abdul Rahman. But you could, if you were Greek, you could name your child Demetrius. There's, no, there's nothing in Sharia that says you can't do that. Right? I actually thought about doing that for one of my sons. <laughs> I didn't, but I thought my grandfather's name was Demetrius. You know, I thought about doing that. You know, Demi. <laughs> Demi. Demi. <laughs> Sounds too much like demon. <laughs> so, you know, that's... Nesib is important. First name, as long as you give them a good name. You know. There were, Juraj is a name that comes in the hadith. And Juraj is George. And the Prophet praised a, a, a monk whose name was Juraj. And you will find some Muslims that had that name, historically. George, Juraj. Right? Juraj is a Greek name, Yorgo. Right? So it's in the hadith. It's in a Sahih Hadith, Juraj, Prophet. He was one of the people that, um, you know, the infant spoke to, to, to uh, because uh, you know the story of Juraj, the monk? Um, they were, th these people were very envious of him. 
And so they wanted to, uh, to destroy his reputation. And so they paid a prostitute to go to the, his, his monastery because he's a very righteous Christian. And she came at the night and she said, I don't have a place to stay. Will you let me in? And so he, he was, you know, his humanity was there. But at the same time, he was worried because monks are flee the world. And women, you know, that was symbolic of the world for monks in a lot of ways. So, but his humanity, you know, the spirit of the law overrode the law. And he, so he led her into the monastery. And then she tried to seduce him. And he would put his hand into the, fi into the candle to remind himself of the fire. So he did not uh, sleep with her. But she went, and then on the way back, she failed. But she met a shepherd on the road back. And she seduced him, and she became impregnated. And she claimed that Juraj seduced her. So the people went and tore down his, uh, his monastery. And then when the child uh, was born, uh, they went to the, the, the child, and the child said she lied. In the child in, in the cradle said she lied. I'm the son of the shepherd. And so they, they knew that Joraj was, that he was, uh, he was such a righteous man. That was a miracle that Allah gave to prove his innocence. And they, so they built him a monastery with gold. And <laughs> <laughs> right? People are pretty horrific, right? <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Well, people do that, yeah. They change their names. I, 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 that's pretty sad. Let's put it that way. I don't think it's, I don't know if you could actually say that would be haram to, to do that. Unless he changed his last name, which is prohibited. In fact, the Prophet uh, said that anybody that called themselves by other than the name of their father, that he was free from them. He had no relation with them. It's, that's one of the things you cannot do. So somebody, you know, who was, whose last name was, um, you know, like uh, Zain al-Abidin and he changed it to Smith or something like that. Can't do that. But if his name was Muhammad and he came here and he changed it to Mo, you know, that, they do that, things like that, right? Well, what if he was a non-Muslim and he changed his last name to Muslim? Well, I, when I converted, I, my, my father's name was, um, and my grandfather's name were Joseph. And, and I asked my sheikh if I could be Ben Yusuf. I asked him that. And he, and he said that, that I could do that. So, I don't know. Allah Ta'ala. But I went back to Hanson. You know, so, for a long time, that's, that's what I went by. I Arabized my name. And then I just thought, you know, I'm not an Arab. So, there's no reason why I should have an Arab name. As I kind of matured and got older, you know. <laughs> you're young, you're kind of zealous. And so then would you recommend for someone to change their last name if they convert? No. no? Just I wouldn't. Them? In fact, I really have reservations. I don't think they change their name at all. I don't, legally. Because I have more problems in the Muslim world when they go to visit with a Muslim name than they would with a non-Muslim name. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, because I've had that. I've suffered because of it. I've been... Um, denied entry into countries with an American passport simply because I had an Arab name in my passport. And I, I watched Americans go in next to me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I just, you know, why bring yourself that trouble? There's no, there's no reason why you should do that, you know. There's nothing in Sharia that says you have to change your name. If you want to take a Muslim name, that's perfectly fine. You know, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's probably a good thing. It's just the first name though, right? Yeah, the first name. I wouldn't change the last name personally. Again, these are just... You know, but if you're denying your father, that's wrong to do that. How, when you were talking about the African Americans earlier, because they received slave names, mm -hmm. does that mean it's so different in their case? Because that technically is not their. Well. Yeah, that's a good point that you're raising. I think that's a very valid point. Um, and I would have to think about that, maybe ask some people about that. But I think that's a really good point. I think that's what a lot of people do, like Madik, uh, you know, Madik Shabazz. He took that name Shabazz, and, and his wife Betty took that name as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
So lineage, right, is preservation of lineage.